Hi, welcome back to Live Lean TV. I'm Jessica Guthrow. We're gonna do a gentle core routine suitable for diastasis recti or back pain. Since my ab workouts have been popular recently, I've gotten a lot of questions about diastasis recti and back pain and whether or not those workouts are suitable for those conditions. The answer is no. I don't want you doing any intense core work if you have a tear down the middle of your abs or back pain when you do those moves. So today I'm gonna to show you a very gentle routine that's suitable for people with that ab condition or back pain. It's also good for beginners. So I'm gonna start by letting you know that I personally do not have diastasis recti. I have two kids, I've been through two pregnancies, but I knew exactly which exercises to avoid during pregnancy. I was very careful. I did not do core work at all during either pregnancy which is one tip if you're pregnant right now, don't do core work. Do not worry about losing your core strength. It's not gonna happen. You will regain all the core strength you need after your pregnancy. Once you're fully healed, you can resume doing core work, even intense core work, like I've been showing you. I'm currently right now seven months postpartum and it is no problem as long as you don't have that tear. But let's say the tear did occur. There's a lot of exercises you can't do because it will make the tear worse. But fortunately, there are some gentle ones that you can do to help heal it. If you're just here because you have back pain and you want to skip over the abdominal separation part, then fast forward to this point in the video just to do the workout. Here's how you're going to do the test to find out if you have the separation or not. Go ahead and lay down on your back, put two fingers together, and with your palm facing towards you, you're going to place them right in the middle of your abs, just above your belly button. Put your other hand behind your head, then you're gonna lift and look down at your belly button, crunch your abs. Take those two fingers and, and gently apply a small amount of pressure, don't push too hard, on that middle part just above your belly button. If your fingers go in, like feeling like they're going into a hole, that means that you do have the separation. If you're hitting something hard that feels like connective tissue and you can't go through, that means you don't have the tear. You wanna also do the check below the belly button and also even at the top of your abs because the tear can happen in different places. Check all the way up and down that line to make sure that it's hard and there's no holes. If your fingers are sinking down and you can feel your insides, then that's how you know that you have the tear. And if you are still unsure after doing this self-test, then go and ask your doctor to do the test for you. Any exercise that puts a lot of intra-abdominal pressure on your core, meaning pressure from the inside outwards, that's what you want to avoid. Nothing that makes you strain or push your belly out forward. Now, I'm going to give you three exercises that are safe for this condition and or people with back pain. We're going to do each exercise together for 10 slow controlled reps. I don't like to do these kinds of workouts on the clock because I want you to take your time and really focus on the sensations that you should be feeling instead of trying to do as many reps as you can in a given time. Your first exercise is simply a breathing exercise. So I want you to put your fingertips on your abs just surrounding your belly button. Take a deep breath in, fill your belly with air, and then blow the air out and focus on contracting your abs small, pressing your lower back down, and closing that gap. You want to imagine that your waist is coming together and closing in the center. So feel with your fingers that your waist is not only going down, but in towards the middle. So we're gonna do 10 slow reps together. Here we go. Okay, that was 10. Next one, you're gonna stay down on your back. Lift your heels off the ground with your knees lined up over your hips. We're gonna do just slow and gentle heel drops while maintaining that core brace. So right now, if you have a gap underneath your lower back, I want you to close that gap. Rock your pelvis forward just a little bit. Make sure your knees are straight over hips. Keep your head down so that you don't put too much pressure on your abs. You want just a, a light amount of pressure. You're gonna slowly, maintaining that core brace, drop one heel, 
and then as you come to the top, you exhale. And focus on closing those abs again, okay? Other side, slowly drop it down, up, and exhale. If you feel like that gap in your back cannot stay closed, then I want you to do this with your feet on the floor and just do one at a time, up and down. Just raising your knee to over your hip and then back down, okay? So that's an even gentler step if it feels like too much with both legs up. I'm gonna do the version with both legs up, but please modify it to be less if that feels better to you. Here we go, 10 reps. Keep your head, neck, and shoulders relaxed. That's four. Keep those abs braced and imagine them closing with each raise up. Eight. lower your feet to the ground. We have one more exercise and you're gonna stay in the same position. I want you to keep your feet all the way close together, so toes and heels touching. We're gonna to focus on dropping the knee out to the side, like this. Go as far as you can comfortably. Do not let your hips rock, so don't fall all the way to the side. Keep your hips square and just let your knee fall down to the side. Now, with your exhale, you're gonna bring it back to the center and think of like zipping your legs up and squeeze your thighs together. Do the other side, let it fall out, and then zip on the exhale, closing everything towards the midline. Again, fall out to the right and zip together. Let's do 10 reps of these together. Here we go. Fall out, one, two, three. Allow your abs to relax as you fall out to the side. Four, five, six, seven, don't forget your breath, eight, nine, ten. Okay, good, that's it. So whether your issue is with back pain or with an abdominal separation, this workout is a good one to make sure that you're strengthening your core and not making your condition worse. Try repeating that circuit two more times for your full core workout. You can do this every other day or three times per week, but I don't recommend doing it every consecutive day because you need to allow some time for recovery in between. Those are your three exercises that I want you to stick to, avoiding crunches, planks, push-ups, any kind of crazy leg lift, intense core exercises. You need to keep it gentle so that you can actually focus on making your core stronger and closing that gap and healing your back instead of just making the problem worse. I know it can be tough to be patient with this and you just wanna do any exercise you wanna do, but you need to honor the starting point that you're at and be really careful just not to make the problem worse and to only focus on making it better. I really hope this workout was encouraging to you if you have diastasis recti or back pain, just to know that there are some moves that you can do and you don't have to avoid all core work in general. You just have to know which core work is safe and which is not safe. So let me know in the comments below if this video helped you. If you're excited to learn how to train your abs the right way and develop the strongest core of your life, then check out the description box below. We have a link below where you can sign up to be one of the first to know about our new abs program coming soon. Thanks for watching and keep living lean.